Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today for the first part in our 12-part series for our new University Life series. So hi, everybody. My name is Louise Sivray, and I am the Talent Acquisition Marketing Specialist at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, and I am going to be hosting the first of these 12 sessions for you today. Now, I am joined by some wonderful people today. So first things first, I would like to hand over to the wonderful Joe Hilton. Joe, hello. How are you doing today? Hello. I'm great. Thank you very much. Amazing. So Can you give us a background? Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm Director of Semester Student Planner and Growth Planner Company. Essentially, I'm a self-help coach and I specialise in mental well-being and personal growth. So a former student myself. I've been there, I've studied, I've faced the challenges and I've learned a lot in the process. So what we do is we create planners, journals and, and supporting coaching all to, to give students the best experience they can while they're at university, really. Thanks so much, Joe. And we are also joined today by Lucy. Lucy, I'll hand over to you. Hi, How's how are you doing? Yeah, good. Thanks, Lucy. Do you want to tell us a little bit about your sort of journey? How do you get to be with us today? Yeah, so I started Enterprise last August as an intern. I just finished my second year at university and then I've just finished my um, placement year now. So I'm heading back to my third year. So I've uh, definitely been in the position going to uni, no, not knowing what to expect. Amazing. Thank you. So we've got a really great panel today. So we've got Lucy, obviously, that's going to help us with some more current student opinions and help guide you through that. Then we have Joe and obviously his professional expertise is going to help you with more that planning and organising. And I graduated many years ago, so I'm here just to host this and to get some great input from these two guys here. So the first session today is our ultimate university to do list. So this is really targeted at people that are going to be going to university for the first time, probably getting ready to go within the next couple of weeks, really, which is super exciting. And this webinar today is going to give you everything that you need to really help you succeed in your first few weeks at university. So we're going to be covering everything from sort of top 10 things to take, how to pack, how to cook, how to save money. There really are going to be a lot of helpful hints and tips in here. And Joe and Lucy will be giving you their personal advice and experience along the way as well. So first things first, kick off this webinar, we are going to talk about the top 10 things to take to university. Now, this is all based off research and what real students have said that, you know, they feel is the, the, the best things to take to university. And before I get into the top 10, Lucy, what would you say the most useful thing was that you actually took with you when you actually went to uni for the first time? Um, so I'd probably say that like the most useful thing I took, it sounds really silly, but <laughs> it was actually like my Nintendo Wii um, that I had from like when I was younger because it meant nice. that we could like put it in the living room and like all my friends, everyone that we lived with, we'd like be playing Mario Kart and stuff on that because <laughs> I, I was in my first year in lockdown. Um, so it just was something to bring us like close together, something that we could um, like bond over, I suppose. I love that. Definitely got some popularity points there, didn't you? <laughs> Nothing like a bit of Nintendo Wii. I love that. Yeah. And Joe, again, before we go into this, obviously, this is a, a really big part of, you know, a young person's life, going off to university for the first time. What sort of advice could you give them for adjusting to this big change before we get into the top 10 things to take? So for me, I studied at home. So I studied at Teesside University. I'm from Teesside. So I just sort of drove, drove straight from Billingham, straight in my hometown, straight to university. So I didn't get that whole experience of, of living away or anything like that. But for me, based on my own experience from university, the one thing I'd say to students is ensure that you really see it as an opportunity. So you're going to go and you're going to... I studied in, in sports science. I got a master's degree in sports science and I do something completely different now but I still learned lots of skills on that journey. So what I'd be saying is actually look at this as a whole opportunity. So really reflect on what you're learning and what it's teaching you about your character. Look at your strengths, your weaknesses, really gain some self-awareness. So don't just look at university as necessarily a chance to gain subject knowledge. That's important. 
but a real chance to learn about yourself and what you enjoy and what you dislike and where you want to go and really start thinking collectively of, of your future as a whole, really. So I wish I'd learned the skills that I teach now from the very start and I wish I'd applied them. And it's so important because it's such a whirlwind journey and it's a real opportunity to, to gain lots of experience and, and really enjoy yourself and learn a lot about yourself in the process as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Joe, for the starting comments there. That's really useful. And yeah, just make the most out of this opportunity, you know, before we get into the, the real content here. You're going to be learning a lot over the next three, four, maybe even five years, depending on what course you're doing. So like Joe said, just, you know, take everything in and enjoy it and, you know, really look at what you're taking out of that experience. So let's get on to top 10 things. Now, some of these might seem a little bit self-explanatory. However, when I was reading through the research, there's a lot of things on there that I wish I'd actually taken to uni. And the first one seems simple, but it's a doorstop. And this actually is very self-explanatory when you think about it, in that you want your door in your flat, if you are sharing with people, to be open. It gives the view that you are ready to make friends and mingle and you want people to come and approach you. If you've got a closed door, it kind of gives off the vibe of don't speak to me. I just want to be in my room alone. But having that doorstop can actually be the first step at helping you to make friends in that quite awkward and uncomfortable environment. So it seems simple, but, you know, fork out a couple of quid and get yourself a doorstop because I really think that that is a really great thing to take. Second of all, again, seems self-explanatory, but a close error. Not a lot of universities offer tumble dryers. Some do, some don't. And especially in the winter months, you want to make sure that you air your clothes out and they're not getting damp, they're not getting smelly, that kind of thing. And just a personal tip as well. A lot of brands will do heated clothes air as, as well, which I've actually got at home, which is really great for over winter. A lot of your electric and everything will be included in your accommodation costs. So you do plug it in, but it shouldn't be too expensive to be able to have a heated clothes air. And again, really quite cost effective, better than a tumble dryer in terms of money and time. And it means that you can get things dried in your room. Third one, again, self-explanatory, but a lot of people forget about it, is a nice little first aid kit or a medicine box. You'll need paracetamol for that headache after, you know, some freshers events. You'll need some cold and flu medicine for your freshers flu, allergy tablets for over the summer, plasters for blisters for wearing new heels or shoes on your nights out. So having a little first aid kit can be really handy because unfortunately mum, dad or guardian are not going to be there to give you your lemsit when you need it anymore. You've got to get that for yourself. So a little medicine thing is really helpful. And on a more adult thing, I guess, documentation. So making sure that you've got your passport, that you've got all of your information for your student accommodation, your student loan, any visa documents or sponsorship documents are very important. Making sure you've got that all to hand on a file in your room as well. So they're there where needed. Number five, sewing kit. I've actually still got the sewing kit that my mum gave me when I went to university and it's never been opened but it's there for emergency purposes so if you are quite inclined at stuff like that and you can repair your own, own clothes much more cost effective than going out and buying new ones so a lot of the time you can get little kits that are already made up on Amazon or other websites that are quite cheap and are, are always good for that if you need it. Something that's really useful is an extension lead. Often in university accommodation, you'll only have a couple of plugs and you might, you know, you might have your television, your phone, an iPad, hair dryer, lights, you name it, and only two plugs, which is the most frustrating thing ever. And your aired, your heated clothes error as well, if you get one of them. So having an extension lead is super helpful because it means you can get a lot of things plugged in at once. Ikea do one for, I think, £2.49 for four. So that's a super good bargain and it will really help you out as well. And home comforts. I want to come to you two here. Joe. if you were moving away somewhere now, what's the one thing that you would take with you? <laughs> oh, great question. Mm. I'm a, because I'm a real advocate for the field that I work in, like my comforts are, are books. Now, I know that might seem like self-explanatory to a student, but I just planning and books because that seems to be like the home comfort for me. I mean, the one thing that's jumped out straight away for me on this list, it comes down to one key term, really, and that's preparation. 
And yeah. it's so important because when you're going into university, essentially you're going into a whole new environment. You're going to have lots of things competing for your time. There's going to be lots of challenges. You're going to be going to new classes, meeting new people, trying to balance your social life, trying to do your studies. There's all this type of thing going on. But for me, it all comes down to preparation. So the more you can prepare and the more you can be ready in advance for these challenges and the more it's going to serve you really. So I'd be really thinking about that aspect, like how can I best prepare for my university experience? And sometimes the little things that we do, it's like a simple morning routine for our well-being or a simple shutdown routine, which might be something like prior to the next day, understand where your class is the next day and make sure you've got your books out ready and make sure you're packed because it's just going to give you that little bit of advantage and, and keep you balanced really because to, to excel at university, you want to feel great mentally and you want to get that experience as well. So yeah, it all falls under preparation for me. And that's probably a little bit biased because it's what I do, but it's been a lifesaver <laughs> for me. So yeah, preparation is key. Yeah, it's a great point. And there's a, there's a section later on in the presentation all about sort of how to write lists and, and plan for packing. So Joe, I'm sure you'll definitely have some great insights on that as well. So Joe's taking books. Lucy, what are you taking? Um, I'd say like, Obviously, to make the like student halls feel a bit more like home, I think that say if you had like a candle or maybe like some shower gel that you always use at home, like you know, just having those smells in your accommodation, it sort of brings back the like home feeling, and like you'll feel a lot more comfortable in your halls, like you'll settle in a lot quicker. So I definitely say like a candle that you've already got at home, or like say if you've got like a favorite shower gel, something like that, just to sort of make it feel a bit more like home when you first move in. That's a great point. And adjusting to your environment as well is always nice if you've got that familiarity around you. I know that when I went to uni, there was a big pin board on my wall that just came as part of the accommodation. And I just filled that with pictures of family and friends and, you know, nice little fairy lights, things to make my dorm room feel like mine. So that's, you know, that's a really great point is making sure that it feels familiar. Uh, moving on now to games. So Lucy's already covered this with a Nintendo Wii, very popular. But again, we don't want to take every single edition of Monopoly that there ever has been, but a deck of cards, um, maybe a couple of board games, again, is a really nice way to help you mingle and, and get to know the people in your flat or your home where you're going to be staying. So definitely have a think about some games that it is that you would like to take, whether they be... Um, games to play with a multiple of people or you know two people it is very good to take number nine self-explanatory umbrella unfortunately the majority of us will be in the uk and it rains all the time and if you do have to walk to your lectures there's nothing worse than getting there looking absolutely soaking it doesn't give the best first impression when you're trying to make mates so get yourself an umbrella from poundland it'll last you a while um self-explanatory really and finally, a strong bag. It can be a fashionable bag. It doesn't have to be a gigantic rucksack, but something that you're going to be able to get all of your belongings in, your books, your iPad, your laptop, whatever it is, and try and make sure that it's waterproof again, just to make sure that everything stays safe inside. But those from the research are the top 10 things to take with you to university. So I hope that there's something on there that you didn't think about packing that you're now going to go away and get sorted before you go in a couple of weeks time. So the next section in this is the tech that makes your life easier at university. Our whole world revolves around tech now. It is what it is. And we want to be very mindful in the tech that we pack. So maybe taking your 80 inch plasma screen TV in the back of your car probably isn't going to be the most effective thing to do. So we've gathered a couple of things that we think are the most useful and effective to take to university. And before I get into this again, I want to go to our panel here. Lucy, what would you say the best tech item was that you took to university with you? So I'd definitely say the best tech item I took with me was um, my laptop. You know, I got like quite like a lightweight laptop and I think it just really saved my life because you don't understand how much you actually carry around your laptops, like from walking to your lectures to like the library and stuff. I think just having like a lightweight laptop really makes your life a lot easier. Joe, what tech can you not live without? So it's, I might come at this from a bit of a strange angle, but I'm, I always class myself as a bit of a technophobe. That's why I use pen to paper and planning and journaling because it just sits with me better. But the truth is obviously we're all using tech to some degree. I've always used my phone. My business couldn't run without my phone. 
The other thing I always say is be mindful of is when you're going into the university experience of trying to avoid tech becoming too much of a distraction. So we've been there when we're trying to, I've been there, that former student who was in the library till all hours because I'd not planned properly. That's what I've learned from. <laughs> but looking at ways sometimes to just make sure that you're managing your tech. So some of the things is if, you, if you're working on an assignment or you're working or you're trying to study, Sometimes just look at how you can limit that distraction. Sometimes just tech and just maybe put your phone in another room or, or, or avoid all distractions. So that's where I come from because I, I truly believe in technology. It's brilliant. It's the way the world's going. It's, there's no getting away from it. But at the same time, from, from what I deliver and what I do, it's also trying to make sure that tech doesn't come a huge distraction either because when you're in your lectures, you want to be engaging, you want to be listening. When you're doing your assignments, you want to be giving yourself that time. You can get quality work done in 30 minutes as opposed to, an hour and a half distracted looking at your phone and this type of thing. So my approach is a little bit like, take it, it's brilliant, but be, my, be mindful of it as well. Great point, Joe. And as well, you don't want to spend all of your time sat in your room on your iPad, you know. Yeah. You want to be out in the common room on the Nintendo Wii with your friends and Absolutely. watching films and things like that. So yeah, 100%. Joe, completely right. Thanks for your input, guys. We've got a couple of things here that we have collated. So the first thing is an external hard drive or additional cloud storage. Now, an external hard drive is something that I really can't recommend enough. It's something that I had whilst I was at university just to back up my documents, my coursework, my exams, dissertation, that kind of thing. So they aren't too expensive. You can get them from Amazon for pretty cheap, but they just plug into your laptop. You can transfer everything over to there so that if, unfortunately, your laptop does have a crazy fit and it breaks down and you lose everything, you've still got everything backed up on there. An additional cloud storage as well is very helpful. So you can get, if you've got an Apple phone, you can get additional iCloud storage for, I think it's £2.47 a month I pay. You're going to be taking lots of pictures. You're going to have lots of memories. You want to make sure that all of that is stored on there as well. So external hard drives and additional cloud storage is pretty cheap and also just a great way to back things up. Online subscriptions is, again, a very important thing. One of the, the things that comes to mind for me that I always use was Spotify. For students, you can actually, if you do it through, um, I think it's Unidays or some sort of student discount website, you get the first month free with Spotify and then you can get it for £5.99 a month after that as opposed to the £10.99 that you normally pay. That means that you've got nice relaxing music to listen to whilst you're studying. You've got music playlists for your parties that you're going to have and walking to and from lectures. And music is a really great way to keep sane as well, especially if you're maybe homesick or you just wanting to chill out in your room. So that's one of the online subscriptions that I definitely benefited from at, at university. Lucy, did you sort of subscribe to anything that you felt was helpful when you were at university or was it just sort of Spotify and similar things for you? Yeah, I mean, it was sort of similar things, you know, like Spotify, so I've got all my music and like Netflix as well. So I could like sit in the living room with my flatmates, like we could get into some yeah. series, things like that. Yeah, I've got an app which I like, I'm talking about not being too tech there, but there's an app called Blinkist, which I love, which is just short, digestible reads and books, because like I said, I love books, so that's something that really helps me. I just wanted to touch on one of the other points that you said, though, and I, I think it's so valuable, that external and cloud storage, like that really needs reiterating, because the last thing you want to do is put all this time and effort into your hard work and your dissertation and your assignments, or whatever it might be, and then lose it. So it's so important. And something else that I only started utilizing recently, which has been a lifesaver for me, is tagging my notes. So when I'm making notes on a, a project or an area and I'm saving them, I tag them when I save them. And then say you're going back and you're doing an assignment and it's on, say, marketing, you just search marketing and it brings up all the relevant notes and all the relevant tags. And it's such a time saver because, one, you don't lose the notes. And it, it's, it's an efficient way of note taking because... We're going to read, we're going to study, but we want to collect them in a place. So that's something that's really helped me. But yeah, external and cloud storage should be reiterated because it's so important. The last thing you want to do is lose anything. Yeah, and that note taking yes. will be really helpful. People doing revision and stuff as well. So yeah. that's a really good point, Joe. Thank you. Another action that's just come to my head on land subscription is gym memberships can be quite expensive and there are a lot of really good apps that you can join for a monthly or an annual subscription that will have, you know, home workouts, things you can do out and about that you don't need a gym membership for. So, again, if you're trying to save money on a gym membership, 
there are a lot of really cost effective apps out there that you can join that will help get things that you can do just in your dorm room so maybe have a look at that if obviously physical health is very important for your mental health as well especially if you are away from home so again you can get a lot of online subscriptions to certain apps for for physical health as well so have a little look into that too next we have what do we have next money management apps so this is extremely important for a lot of you it will probably be the first time that you've ever had to solely manage your finances and there are a lot of really great apps out there that can help you do that. I know for one, if you bank with Monzo, you can get specific pots that you can save money into for specific things. So holidays or graduation or anything like that, you can put money aside for it. Um, I use just really simply just iPhone um, Apple numbers to document my budgets and spreadsheets for the month so I can see what my income is, what my outgoings are and how much money I've got saved after you know, tax, pension, all those sorts of things, but still very relevant for students as well to manage your student loan or any income that you might have from a part-time job coming in. Lucy, did you use any sort of money management apps when you first went to uni? Yeah, so I actually used Monzo and um, like as well as having like the pots where you can save your money, you can also have shared tabs. So like me and my flatmates, um, we all had like a shared tab with one another, it just made things a little bit easier, you know, when we're all, say if like someone goes out and buys loads of like cleaning products and things like that, it just makes it really easy to split the cost. A really great tip, especially everything to do with the cost of living crisis at the moment as well, saving money and in being able to know exactly what your funds are and where you're spending them is extremely important. So have a little look into to money management apps. And then we also have an e-reader. So we are going to go on to how to pack efficiently. But the last thing you want to do is to take every single book that you've ever owned with you in your parents or guardian's car. I'm sure they're probably not going to be very happy with that. So yeah, an e-reader is a great way to be able to not only have books that you can read just for enjoyment, but also have textbooks or books on there that are useful for your course. You can actually get an Amazon Kindle for only £39. So again, it might be something that you want to ask for for an upcoming birthday or a Christmas present or something that you want to treat yourself to if you can before you start university. Because again, it is a really great way to be able to get everything that you need on one device. And if you've already got sort of a, an Apple iPad or a Samsung tablet, a lot of them have their own sort of books or ebook section on there that's very similar to a Kindle. So don't go out and purchase one before checking your current tablet already because I was going to go and buy myself a Kindle and I realised that Apple already had a, a books tab on there that you could buy everything that you could on the Kindle anyway. So again, for money purposes, make sure that you check your current one to see that if there's anything on there. Joe, I know you love books. Do you have a Kindle or are you a paperback, hardback guy? <laughs> a paperback. I love reading with a paperback where I can. I find it really therapeutic. It's really calm and hence why I said it's like my home comforts because it's the place that I get to just shut off and, and zone in with a book. I don't tend to read e-books, but the other thing that I'll do is listen to Audible or listen to yeah. free podcasts. I, I always try and utilise... Because there's educate like for me, education is what always learning. So you don't go to university and then stop learning. It's it's the whole journey throughout your life, in my opinion. So whenever I get opportunities, whether I'm walking the dog or I'm driving somewhere, I've got an audible on, or I've got a podcast on, and I'm trying to develop in my skill set and my knowledge. And I, I, for me personally, I really enjoy it. It's just finding what way works for you. Some people are like ebooks, some people like hard books, audible, but it's just fitting it into your lifestyle and what works best for you, really. That's a great point. And Audible is a great one to actually go into that online subscription tab because a lot of people love to listen to podcasts. I know that I listen to a lot of sort of self-help, mental health orientated podcasts that really help me to sort of um, achieve what it is I want to achieve and mindfulness. So everything from there to crime podcasts, if that's what you like, or um, news podcasts or just educational podcasts in general. So that's a really great point, Joe. And something that we maybe should have put on here was podcasts because that, that's a really great point. And last but not least in the tech, we have noise cancelling headphones, which I would argue is probably the most important thing to take to university, whether you're studying in a busy library or the flat across the road is having a party at 3am on a Monday night and you've got an early lecture noise cancelling headphones are super useful. Again, there's some great ones out there that aren't going to break the bank. So do a little shopping around and see. I know that I've got the 
I think it's the the beats that are the noise cancelling ones and they only cost £65, which might seem like a lot, but they'll last a very long time. Um, Bluetooth, so you don't have to worry about having them connected to anything. Charge them up, battery life's, you know, a good 10 hours. So have a shop around for some noise cancelling headphones because I think arguably that's possibly one of the most important things that you need for university. Amazing. So moving on from tech to how to pack efficiently and... Joe, this is when I'm going to come to you for your expertise on organisation and planning. What tips can you give our to-be students about getting organised? One of the things that we teach within our planners and our core coaching modules, let's say, is we choose something called the focus view. And what this is, it's three key tasks every day to move you closer towards your goals or your studies or whatever it might be. Because like I said already, we live in a world which is there's a lot of distraction. There's a lot of overwhelm. Everything is fighting for our attention all of the time. And we've got to try and get really focused. So within our planner, what I do at the start of every day is I write three key focus tasks for that day because I could write a task list with 20 tasks on, but I'm never going to get it all done in a day. So I'm always thinking, what are the three most important things I can do today to move me closer towards my goals? And if I get to the end of the day and I've completed them three tasks, then it's been a good day. And then we just continue the next day and move forward. And it's always just small little actionable steps that we can take. So for me, it's get clear on priorities, understand that you can't achieve everything in a day, it's impossible, and just try and be as efficient with your time and your prioritization as possible. Great point, Joe, thank you. And Lucy, when you were getting prepared for university and you were getting ready to pack, what tips can you give students now to help them with that? Um, I remember when I first started, um, and I moved to Leeds like in my first year, I packed every single item of clothing I owned and I don't know why. Um, so I think that just packing for like the weather and stuff is just so important. Like I remember I was in the middle of like November and I had loads of summer clothes in my accommodation and you've got very limited storage and things. So just make sure that you are like packing what you need rather than just taking every single thing that you own. That's a great point. Thank you. And actually leads us on nicely to what we've put on as our four tips. So number one is write a list. You know, as Joe said, make sure that you are sort of getting everything written down. And, I, and I've got to admit, I love tech, but I do think that writing an actual list is very helpful because it can sort of help you cross things off in your mind when you're ticking that off that sort of actual list. So writing a list is super helpful. You want to make sure that you are splitting it into rooms. So for a lot of you, you're going to have a kitchen, a common living area, a bathroom, whether that be shared or private, and then your own personal room. So if you've not lived independently before, you are going to have to think about getting pots and pans and cutlery and, and crockery and things that you hadn't necessarily thought of before. So a trip to Ikea is definitely necessary, but splitting that into rooms so that it just helps you compartmentalise what it is that you need to pack. It can sometimes be quite overwhelming in the lead up to university thinking about all the things that you need so splitting it into rooms can be super helpful and just as Lucy mentioned think of the different seasons so we are going into autumn and winter so even though we're currently going through a bit of a heat wave in a couple of weeks time no doubt it might be snowing so think about jumpers socks you know fluffy socks boots gloves scarves hats but then also start and think about spring as well if it isn't as easy for you to go home and you know um, regularly to pick up more bits you might want to think about packing lightly but again thinking of those different seasons that are coming up as well and then finally don't overpack it's I am probably the worst person because I definitely take about three suitcases to go on a weekend away but you want to try to not overpack and just be realistic if there's things at home that you maybe haven't worn for years or things that you haven't used you're probably not going to use them anytime soon and it's also a great time to do a clear out at home you know do a couple of charity runs with any clothes or gadgets that you don't use anymore so doing a nice clear out before packing helps you to to not overpack as well but again i am the worst person at giving advice for that so try not to overpack but i'm pretty useless at that <laughs> I can jump in there as well, Louise. Yeah. One of the concepts that I've learned a lot about lately is something called minimalism. Now, mm. minimalism is this concept of we've always got too much. Now, a lot of overwhelm and a lot of stress is, is basically happens because we've got too much going on in our brain. We think we've got to get too much done. And for me personally, 
I used to have a lot of clothes, a lot of clothes and my wardrobes were full. And what I've done over the last couple of years is I've just reduced that right down now. And I've got it in a, and it's not for everybody. This is just something that's worked for me, but I've got a lot smaller spaces now with a lot more organized things. So I, I know where everything is in terms of in my house and things like that. And I, I'm, I'm trying to avoid that overpacking things for the sake of it, because for me, one, you don't need it. And when you've got clutter creates stress and overwhelm in our brain so it, it actually scientifically does so that the more we can declutter and make things more organized the more efficient the better it makes us feel it's great for our well-being so it's a really important tool that people sometimes overlook it's like they always say don't they like messy desk messy mind try to keep your space clean try to keep your organization efficient and it'll make you feel better it really does work that's a great point Joan. it's mindful as well to remember that at home, you might have a huge wardrobe, you know, chest of drawers, various, maybe even a separate walk-in wardrobe. But at university, you've likely got one tiny double wardrobe and a couple of drawers. So, again, the last thing you want is for that one quite small space that you're going to spend a lot of time in, like Joe said, to be completely overcrowded with things, because that can definitely make you feel very crowded in your mind as well. So it might even be better to take less and then when you go home for Christmas, maybe grab some more things and take them with you if you know you've got the space. But especially with um, packing with clothes as well, a big trend at the minute is sort of capsule wardrobes. So making sure that you've got pieces that you can mix and match to create a variety of different smart and casual outfits. So there's a lot of Instagram pages out there for capsule wardrobes that can be very useful. And I definitely used it a lot to sort of get my wardrobe down to being a lot more minimalist and taking a lot of things to charity. So that's a really great point as well when it comes to packing clothes. Now, moving on now from packing to tips on student accommodation. So for a lot of you, this is going to be the first time moving away from home, the first time doing things independently. And I will be honest, it can be very overwhelming. So we have a couple of tips that are going to help you with more sort of the serious and difficult side of things that maybe you don't have as much knowledge on. So we split it up into a few sections, but before you move, there's definitely a few things that you want to do. So I know that this this happened when I went to university, but there was specific Facebook groups for specific halls of residence so that you could type in where it is that you were going to be moving to and then connect with people that were also living in that accommodation and it meant that you had a few familiar faces before you went Lucy is that still a thing or is that not something that really happens anymore yeah definitely still a oh, thing perfect. when um, I moved to Leeds I joined some Facebook groups you know just met people who were in my building I think I, I joined quite a lot actually because there was there was ones that was like for the whole of Leeds there was ones that were just specifically for like my university in Leeds like one specifically for my accommodation so there's loads of ways to like meet people through them. That's a great point and a lot of courses as well will have specific Facebook groups as well I know that we had a psychology one at Teesside Uni and it meant that you could connect with everybody that was on that course so it's great to know somebody to go and meet with a coffee with before the lecture. So you've got somebody to sit with. I know, Joe, you do some work in Teesside Uni as well. Is that something that they do? Yeah. So, I mean, it's all about create, like fostering that environment for community, isn't it? That's what it's about because yeah. you're going into a totally new environment. So the more connecting with people is vital for our well-being. And I know it can be scary at times. It can feel uncomfortable, but you want to be connecting with as many people as you can because connection is literally vital to, to our mental well-being. So just look at any opportunities that you can, whether that's like you say, in your in your rooms, in your dorms, whether it's extra clubs you can get involved with, sports clubs, anything like that, library clubs, just try and foster that community aspect as much as you can because it will help you. You'll have people to support you on your journey and, and people who might be going through similar challenges and things like that. So it, it is such an important tool, especially when it comes to our mental well-being as well. Great point, Joe. Thank you. I'm glad that's still a thing because it was definitely super helpful for me when I went to uni to be able to connect with people. So, yeah, very important. You can start doing that now before you move. One of the more serious ones is to check your deposit. So deposits are there to cover the non-payment of rent or any damage to the property at all whilst you're in it. And landlords are not required by law to put your deposit in a government registered scheme. So within 30 days, you should get a letter 
to confirm the details of that scheme and how to release your money at the end of the tenancy because a lot of the time a deposit is normally how much a one month's rent is so it's often quite a lot of money and you want to make sure that you have the ability to get that back at the end pending that you've you know adhered to the terms and conditions of your tenancy agreement and on the topic of a tenancy agreement as well we want to go into a couple of things on here as well so Check your obligation section. So that is what you can and can't do during your time in the accommodation and make sure you agree with it. Quite often things like no pets, that kind of thing. So make sure that you are checking that obligation section very thoroughly and that you agree with everything before committing to that tenancy agreement. You want to check for any agreed repairs that you want your landlord to do before you move in. So, you know, does the washing machine work? Does all the electrical and plumbing work? You've not got a leaky tap or a dripping shower that's going to keep you up all night. And making sure that you agree that with your landlord to get those repairs fixed before you enter the property. And then also, does your tenancy agreement allow for general wear and tear of the property? It is a student house. No doubt there will be some parties or some social events going on where things might get damaged. So you want to check about the extent of what wear and tear is classed as in your personal tenancy agreement, just so you're not going to get any surprises at the end of your tenancy when you do move out. And in the event of a repair, you want to make sure that you act swiftly. So as soon as you notice a repair problem, whether it's something that's been caused by you or is in the property prior to you moving in, you want to notify the landlord immediately, verbally and confirm in writing and never wait for a small problem to grow into a large nuisance before taking that action. And as mentioned, you do want to make sure that you have everything in writing. You want to make sure that you have everything written out so that if there is any proof needed, You've got that all down there with dates and keep a copy of every correspondence that you have with your landlord or accommodation manager. And you want to be reasonable about repairs as well. So you're not going to walk into your flat and say, this is great, but I want the whole thing to be painted green before I come in. You want to be reasonable about that. So absolutely, if there's something urgent, it should be organised and sourced out within one to two days. If it's a non-urgent repair, the rule of thumb is it's normally around 28 days for a repair. So just keep that in mind as well. If, if for example, a cupboard handle's falling off, it's not exactly urgent. You can't expect the landlord to come out within 24 hours, but make sure that it is communicated, that it must, must be fixed in whatever length of time it's stated in your tenancy agreement. Hey, Lucy, did you have anything to do with sort of tenancy agreements before you moved in? Yeah, I think the, the only thing I'd probably say you'd like to add would be take pictures if like there is a bit of wear and tear when you first move in, just take pictures um of that, like say if it's damaged or anything like that. A lot of the time, like they'll have it marked already on like whatever their system is. Um, but you just don't want to be stung with like a cost at the end, like they're saying that you've damaged something when it was there when you moved in. So we do have a couple of things left to go through. Now, probably one of the most daunting things for me going to university was I had absolutely no idea how to cook. Uh, we did food technology in my school, so I think I could learn a couple of things like some soup and spaghetti bolognese. But the extent of my cooking abilities 10 years ago was putting things in an oven. So you are going to have to learn to cook, unfortunately. Takeaways are extremely expensive unless you live close to home and you can pop in and see your your mum, dad or guardian and have them cook your tea every night. Unfortunately, unless you want to starve, you are going to learn how to cook. So we have got a couple of, of tips on here that's going to help you do that and be cost effective as well. So the first one is the student food project. Now, this is something that I actually used back when I was at university and I still use it now because it has some great recipes in there. But it is a website set up with healthy, easy and affordable meals that normally take under about 30 minutes to cook. They've got sort of like a 15 minute section, a 30 minute section. They've got everything from curries, pasta to hummuses and smoothies and breakfast items. And it's also very cost effective as well. So it works out exactly how much each portion costs. So the student food pro project is a really nice one. And similarly, uh, BBC Good Food Student Recipes is the same. Not really different, but again, it's split into how much time it takes to cook, how cost effective it is. Another point is to use social media, and this is actually something that I use a lot for my meal planning and prep, is normally TikTok and Instagram. There's some really great content creators out there that will showcase how to make meals in bulk, depending on what sort of um, thing it is that you're looking for, whether you're really into the gym and you're active and you're looking for meals that are high protein or 
you're looking for meals that maybe have lower carb or lower sugar or fat or whatever it is you've got a lot of really great content creators out there that showcase those meals and not only that but how to cook them as well and TikTok's quite great for for students as well because a lot of students do what I eat in a day if you've ever seen them before which is really great to get some inspiration from as well and then finally all in one pan which is something that I absolutely swear by is there's so many great recipes and cookbooks where you do not have to be Gordon Ramsay. You stick everything in a pan, you cook it for 30 minutes on the hob or the oven, and then you've got yourself a meal. So I'm a big advocate for the all-in-one pan, but absolutely there's a lot of different recipes out there that you can use as well. Lucy, what did you do for cooking when you went to uni? How daunting was that on a scale of one to 10? Or did you already know how to cook? <laughs> no, I definitely didn't know how to cook when I first moved. But I mean, luckily, like the girls who I lived with, they were all um, a little bit more into the cooking. So they taught me a lot of things as well as like, like we'd make like group meals. Um, it just splits the cost up a little bit more, you know, um, if you could just buy everything together and then like you're not all having to make individual meals. It's also less washing up for everyone. So definitely say like sort of... Um, trying to make like shared meals is a good way to save money that's a great point and joe where do you get your recipes from there's a couple of things that stand out there it's like make it fun like if you've never done it before make it fun like lucy said there like in groups they were they were cooking together you can make that into a little social gathering you can take turns cooking for each other and you can make it into a bit of a social gathering which is going to be again good for your well-being so just just try and have fun with it if you if it is a case of that you're going to learn to cook then then, then get enjoyment from it because that's what it's about really that's a great point I had some friends when they were in university that used to do come down with me style nights yeah. almost every night so <laughs> someone would cook for them it'd be like a Mexican night an Italian yeah. night and they would all take it in turns and and, and like these two were saying it, it you know it's a great social thing as well to help get everyone in the flat connected it's a good laugh yeah. and also something to look forward to as well and food's a a big thing it brings people together so being able to do that in a way that's going to be healthy but also cost effective is is super important so on the topic of cost effective we have to devise a list of some shopping strategies and how to save money on your food shop which actually i found extremely useful when i was having a look at this research because unfortunately due to the cost of living crisis food shopping is now a lot more expensive than it ever has been and especially for a student where you only get a certain amount of student loan if you aren't able to work part-time throughout your studies it can be very difficult to know what to buy where to save money and, and how to make sure that you are getting the best deals so first things first this is something that actually me and my partner do we meal prep every week so on a Sunday we make our meals from Monday to Wednesday and then on a Thursday we make our meals for Thursday to Saturday Sunday is always takeaway day I will admit but we do meal prep and it's actually super useful for when you have a really busy lifestyle because if you come home and there's nothing ready for you after a long day that is quite often where you will order a takeaway or you'll go to McDonald's or you'll have something that's unhealthy whereas if you've got that meal already for you in the fridge that you just have to heat up and it's nutritious it not only saves money because you are making it in bulk but it also limits your unhealthy amount of food that you have and then the money spent on takeaways so I would really advocate for meal prep it definitely works for me and, and I know it does for a lot of people another thing that's very useful is meal subscription services I know that we see adverts for them everywhere I think every content creator has got a brand partnership with hello fresh out there at the moment but it is actually a really good service and something that students can use and they don't realize how cost effective it is so on the topic of HelloFresh, it can be a great way to cook as well because you get those recipe cards that teach you how to do it step by step. But for HelloFresh, for example, students get a 55% discount on their first box with uni days and then 15% off ongoing from that. So you can get three or four meals for as little as £25 a week and quite often they're for two people. So there's your lunch sorted for the next day or your meals sorted for the next day as well. So have a look at meal subscription services and, and use discounts like uni days to see where you can get discount off boxes because that's a great way to not only learn how to cook but to save money as well. Supermarket discounts is a big one so a lot of the time there will be a reduced section that quite often has food that's absolutely fine that can be frozen or used for lunch or whatever the next day. 
especially likes of Aldi and Lidl are also a lot more cost effective. Food Warehouse, Iceland, they're really great at finding some great bargains. So having a look at supermarket discounts. And this is something that I used to be really bad for was looking at sell by date. So we get an online food shop delivered every Monday and I would stick the meat in the fridge and I wouldn't look at the sell by date. And on Wednesday, I go to cook it and my chicken was out of date, which is such a waste of money. So what I'd recommend is either batch cooking things where you can so that they last longer or individually bagging up that meat if you are living independently, popping it in the freezer and making sure that you are adhering to the sell by dates. The last two points, we've got frozen over fresh. So again, fresh fruit and vegetables is extremely expensive at the moment in comparison to how much it used to be. So in the likes of Aldi and Lidl, you can get, you know, big bags of, of fresh um, veg and fruit that's been frozen alongside meat as well. It might be more expensive in the, uh, you know, the, the first shop to buy that all in bulk, but then in the long run, that is going to really save you money because you're going to have all that stuff ready in the freezer. And finally, the best one, and I'd love to know if Joe and Lucy ever use this. Have you guys ever used the Too Good To Go app? I haven't, but I'm definitely thinking about it. Oh, Lucy's nodding. Lucy, have you used it? Um, yeah, I've used it before. So I've, um, I got a Greg's not long ago, actually. And you know what? I got so much in the bag. I got like, I think it cost me about £4 in total. And I got like three sandwiches, loads of like pastries and stuff. So it's definitely, like, you definitely get a lot for your money. Oh, that's, I can just tell that Joe's going to go and download the two good to go up after this. <laughs> 100%, 100%. The other thing I would say as well on that is going back to the cooking thing with a subscription. That, mm -hmm. That's what helped me initially get started with like cooking. Like I say, I'm not Gordon Ramsay. I'm not Five Star Michelin Chef or anything like that. But I've learned a basic level of cooking through HelloFresh. And it might be a bit of a cheat code, but we've kept all the recipes as well. So they're there for you to go back to and use at any point. But it's such a great starting point for learning to cook because it gives you the instruction manual step by step. And, and again, one of the things that I, the reason that we ordered it for us, it was that convenience and efficiency. So coming home every night and having something ready to cook just saves time mm -hmm. in other places, which needed to get my focus and priorities. So. And Lucy, when you were in your accommodation, what sort of things did you do to save money? Did you use any of these tips at all? Yeah, so I definitely used to love a late night supermarket shop, you know, get those um, discounted items because they are really cheap. And like you said, a lot of the time, even though they're fresh, they can be frozen and they will last. So like veg and stuff like that, you can get from there and like put it in the freezer and it'll last you a, a while. Yeah, great point. And there are some really great tips on here. And there are definitely ways that you can save money. A lot of places will also do coupons and different discounts for students as well. So have a little shop around and have a look. And also a lot of people that I know will get food shopping as a as a house as well. So they'll all go out food shopping together rather than getting their own individual food shopping. So that can sometimes be quite helpful if you all go out shopping together and split the cost. So that's something that you might want to do later on once you've developed those relationships in your flat and you're able to go and do that kind of thing together. So as you can see on the screen, we've just popped up there our socials to stay connected. So we have our Instagram, we have our LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, and we also have our YouTube as well, where these sessions will be uploaded to so that if you did manage to didn't manage to make the start, but you want to watch the rest of it, these will eventually be uploaded onto there so you can see. And we do have a lot of great content on there about finding a career and a placement and things like that as well, if you're at your point in your life where you're thinking about that. So please do follow us on our socials. I think we do actually one have one question, which is any discounts on moving with rent -a car from Danny, which is a great point. We do occasionally offer things like that at certain points in the year. So keep an eye on our website to see if we do have any discounts. Only issue with being a rental car company is you do have to be over the age of 25 to rent through our branches just because that's the legal age. But we do have Enterprise Car Club, which is available for anyone over the age of 18. So that's an hourly check in, check out vehicle that you can actually use. It's available for students. So if you haven't already, I would definitely have a look at Enterprise Car Club because that's a very cheap and cost effective way to temporarily get a car to help whilst moving to university. But if that is the only question that we have, I just want to say a massive thank you 
to Joe and Lucy. Joe, any parting comments before we go off today? No, not really. All I would say is if there's any students out there in the, the one any support with getting ahead, planning, organising this type of thing, give me an ad on LinkedIn. So Joe Hilton, you'll find me on LinkedIn under Self Help Coach. And then give Semester Student Planner a follow as well. That's on Instagram, TikTok as well. And we'll always be happy to answer any questions and support where we can to ensure that when you set off to university, you get the best experience that you can, really. Thanks, Joe. And I've actually got one of Joe's planners and it's honestly amazing. I've been using it to put all of my goals and plan my life in there. So I genuinely would have a look at, you know, what Joe does because it's super useful and there's no better time to do it than when you're getting ready to do this big life change. So thanks, Joe, for your sort of input today. It's been really great to have you on. No problem. Thank and you. And Lucy, any parting comments from our current student? Yeah, just just the same things, really. Like anyone um, who wants to add me on LinkedIn, who wants to give me a message, you know, please do. Anyone that's in Leeds, you know, you can message me. We could meet up if, like, you're wanting to make some friends, anything like that. Uh, but I just hope anyone that is going to uni isn't worried at all because it is going to be the best years of your life. Thank you so much, both of you. It's been a pleasure to have you on today. But again, massive thank you to Joe and Lucy and thank you to everyone watching that's joined us for the first session. Enjoy the rest of your day and we will see you guys again in two weeks for the next session. So thank you so much, everybody. Have a Thanks great so Tuesday. See you later. Take care.